We introduce you to one of those heroes whose war, war service is the stuff of legends with books and movies, but not nearly enough to tell all the story. James McNasty McNeese served in the American Army during World War II. Well, I'm not a hero, I'm just a survivor. McNeese's unconventional methods earned him the nickname Filthy McNasty from his guides. He frequently defied superior officers, but defended his actions by arguing that men were killed because they listened to a stupid lieutenant. Were you a troublemaker? I was a troublemaker. Join us as we look at the secret soldier the U.S. was afraid to send to war. 14. Jake McNasty McNeese. The man behind the mayhem. Jake McNeese was a member of the Filthy 13, a group of men assigned to the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division during World War II. The Filthy 13 was to enter Normandy ahead of other D-Day assault groups on June 6th and execute sabotage by damaging bridges, preventing the Germans from replenishing their beach fortifications. Jake McNeese and the rest of the Filthy 13 were clearly distinguished from the other 101st Pathfinders, not only because of their goal, but also because they shaved their heads in a mohawk style and painted their faces like Indian warriors. They were also assigned to regimental headquarters instead of a Pathfinder company. 13. Early Life James E. Jake McNeese was a native of Maysville, who lived most of his life in Ponca City. He graduated from Ponca City High School, where he lettered in football three years and was senior class president. In 1942, he volunteered for the Army and underwent paratrooper training, eventually serving as a Pathfinder for the legendary 101st Airborne Division. His first combat jump took place in Normandy, behind German lines and inland from the D-Day beach landings, when he participated in demolition operations. A second jump took place in Zahn, Holland, when he helped liberate towns that had just been under German captivity for five years. There, he helped clear a route through a German minefield. He performed another combat leap at Prüm, Germany, allowing airborne resupply of General Patton's 3rd Army. McNeese, a member of a voluntary suicide demolition squad known as the Filthy 13, inspired the film The Dirty Dozen. His civilian career in Ponca City spanned 26 years at the U.S. Post Office, where he helped establish a federal employees' credit union and served as president for several years. For 10 years, he served on the Ponca City Welfare Board, which oversaw overseeing the city's emergency relief agency. He frequently spoke to school groups, service clubs, veterans' organizations, and other groups about his paratrooper adventures during World War II. 12. Military Career In our thumbnail, we can see Jake McNasty McNeese in his battle gear, and I must say, it is impressive. Imagine coming face to face with such a warrior, it's enough to discourage any enemy. McNeese signed up for military service on September 1, 1942. He was assigned to the Demolition Saboteur Unit of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. This section became known as the Filthy 13, and it was first led by Lieutenant Charles Mellon, who was killed in action on June 6, 1944, during the Normandy invasion. After Mellon died, Private McNeese led the unit. McNeese's purposeful disobedience and contempt throughout training prevented him from being promoted beyond private when most paratroopers were promoted to private first class after 30 days. McNeese would serve as a section sergeant and first sergeant on numerous operations. His first sergeant and company commanders recognized him as the man the regiment could rely on in war. His adventures are chronicled in his books, The Filthy Thirteen, Fighting with the Filthy Thirteen, and War Paint, The Filthy Thirteen, Jumps into Normandy. McNeese performed four combat jumps during World War II, the first of which occurred during the Normandy invasion in 1944. In the same year, he participated in Operation Market Garden in the Netherlands, which was portrayed in the novel A Bridge Too Far and The Siege of Bastogne, part of the broader Battle of the Bulge. He served as a demolition platoon sergeant while fighting in the Netherlands. He volunteered for Pathfinder training, expecting to spend the rest of the war training in England, but his Pathfinder squad was called upon to jump into Bastogne and guide resupply drops. His last jump was in 1945 near Prüm, Germany. In acknowledgement of his natural leadership talents, he was appointed acting first sergeant of headquarters company, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment at the end of the war. McNeese was booted out of the service in February 1946 following a final fight with MPs. 11. The Birth of the Dirty Five For more than a century, popular culture has focused on the First World War. Sam Jefferson, a singer-songwriter, 
was inspired to make music about the fight after seeing a photograph of his great-grandfather Jim Marshall during his war service. Sam's song, The Dirty Five, is based on Jim and his Barnsley Pals Battalion experiences, especially their participation in the Battle of the Somme. Following training, the five lads joined the Barnsley Pals Battalion. They battled together until 1916, when they took part in one of the most brutal conflicts in military history, the Battle of the Somme. Jim Marshall was born June 10, 1894, and his grandson was born July 6, 1994. However, it finally occurred to him a few months ago that they are almost exactly 100 years apart. It still surprises him that Jim and his friends were fighting in the trenches at the same time. These would be their final days together. Jim told his grandson that after being forced to retreat from the front lines, he and his four friends were injured by a German mortar bombardment. One lad was killed quickly, while the other two were never found. 10. The Birth of the Legendary Paratrooper Theodore Hermann Bachenheimer was an American soldier. In just three years, he became renowned as one of the war's most daring reconnaissance scouts. Martha Gellhorn befriended the legendary paratrooper, also known as the G.I. General. Private Bachenheimer had an exceptional ability for battle, yet he was a peacemaker. He claimed he was against any conflict and could not hate anyone. Levantant to General James M. Gavin, who was well regarded by his fellow combatants and remembered by high-ranking U.S. Army officials, once remarked of him, that his bravery was, beyond question, of an exceptional high order. Backenheimer stood out more for the risks he took with his daring approach than for the bravery itself. He chose to complete the mission he began, regardless of the sacrifice. Backenheimer, one of the division's most notable characters, died at the age of 21. After being apprehended by German soldiers and imprisoned in a POW camp, the brave Backenheimer escaped from his boxcar at night with three other Allied soldiers. They waited for Backenheimer along the lines, but he did not appear and most likely leaped off farther north between Harderwijk and Nunspeed. Backenheimer was recaptured for the final time by the Germans, somewhere between Nykirk and the village of Tard, probably to restore communication with his resistance outfit. According to local reports, a Wehrmacht truck came to a stop along the Ypres in a Tard in front of the DeLonga family's home when three gunshots were heard. Later that morning, the German commander of a neighboring army base directed the local municipality to retrieve Bachenheimer's body from the base. His body had two gunshot wounds, one in his neck and one in the back of his head, both of which were considered fatal. Bachenheimer's body had a few items, including personal papers, dog tags, suspenders, his gold wedding band, and a silver ring engraved with the message, I love Holland. A memorial stone marks the location where he was most likely shot. However, no verifiable eyewitness reports are known by name, and the significant question lingers about the specific moments and motivations that led to Bachenheimer's death. 9. The Birth of the Filthy 13 The first demolition section of the regimental headquarters company of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, United States Army, known as the Filthy 13, participated in the European campaign during World War II. This unit served as the idea for The Dirty Dozen, a 1965 novel and 1967 film. The first demolition section was designated and trained to act as demolition saboteurs, destroying enemy objectives behind enemy lines. The unit, led by Sergeant Jake McNeese, had a strong mission focus, but their contempt for components of military discipline that did not contribute to their goal became the commander's undoing. The 13-man unit earned the nickname Filthy 13 while living in Nissen huts in England, refusing to bathe throughout the week to use their water allotment to prepare wildlife they had poached from the adjoining manor. Photos of the guys wearing Native American-style mohawks and applying war paint piqued the public's interest in their squad. McNeese, a Choctaw Indian, served as the idea for this. During the Normandy invasion of Europe in June 1944, the group was airdropped with the 3rd Battalion, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, by aircraft from the 440th Troop Carrier Group of the United States Army Air Force. They were given orders to secure or destroy the Douve River bridges. Half were killed, wounded, or taken during the leap, but the remainder, headed by McNeese, completed their goal. Most of the 3rd Battalion leadership had been killed on the jump, so higher authorities concluded the the battalion had failed its task and ordered the Air Force to attack the bridges. The Filthy 13 also helped capture Corentin. During Operation Market Garden, the demolition platoon was tasked with defending the three bridges across the Dommel River in Eindhoven, Netherlands. The German bombing of the city killed or wounded half of the demolition platoon's soldiers, and McNeese was elevated to platoon sergeant for the remainder. Jack Womer assumed his place as section sergeant, 
For the remainder of the fight, the demolition men guarded the regimental command post or wire-laying details. Half of the original Filthy 13's surviving members joined McNeese and the Pathfinders, expecting to spend the rest of the war training in England. To their amazement, they parachuted into the besieged town of Bastogne during the height of the Battle of the Bulge. The 20 Pathfinders lost only one guy, despite being expected to lose 80 to 90% of their numbers. Their CRN-4 beacon allowed them to guide following airdrops of supplies that were critical to the 101st Airborne Division's sustained resistance. McNeese completed the war as the acting first sergeant and with four combat jumps, a unique accomplishment for an American paratrooper. His combat jumps included Normandy and the Netherlands as part of Operation Market Garden, the Pathfinder jump into Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge, and an observer role with the 17th Airborne Division during Operation Varsity. Of the activities of the Filthy 13, Jack Agnew once said, We weren't murderers or anything. We didn't do everything we were supposed to do in some ways, and did a lot more than they wanted us to do in other ways. We were always in trouble. 8. The Normandy Jump The Normandy landings were the landing operations and associated airborne operations carried out by the Allied invasion of Normandy in Operation Overlord on Tuesday, June 6, 1944. Operation Neptune, also known as D-Day, was the greatest seaborne invasion in history. The operation launched the liberation of France and the rest of Western Europe, laying the groundwork for the Allies' victory on the Western Front. The planning for the operation began in 1943. In the months preceding the invasion, the Allies carried out a significant tactical deception, codenamed Operation Bodyguard, to mislead the Germans regarding the date and location of the main Allied landings. The weather on D-Day was unfavorable, and the operation had to be postponed 24 hours. A further postponement would have resulted in a two-week delay, as planners had to account for the moon, tides, and time of day, which meant just a few days every month were considered ideal. Extensive aircraft and naval bombardment followed the amphibious landings and an airborne assault, which landed 24,000 American, British, and Canadian airborne forces just after midnight. At 6.30, Allied infantry and armored units began to land on the French shore. The objective 50-mile stretch of Normandy coastline was divided into five sectors, Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. Strong winds blew the landing craft east of their intended locations, especially in Utah and Omaha. The Marines landed under heavy fire from gun emplacements overlooking the beaches, and the shore was mined and littered with impediments, including wooden stakes, metal tripods, and barbed wire, making beach-clearing teams' jobs tough and dangerous. The highest number of casualties occurred at Omaha, which had towering cliffs. The Allies failed to meet any of their objectives on the first day. Carenton, saint lo and Bayou remained in German control, and Cayenne, a crucial target, Target, was not seized until July 21st. Only two beaches, Juno and Gold, were linked on the first day, with all five beachheads not connected until June 12th. However, the operation gained a footing, and the Allies progressively expanded it over the next months. German casualties on D-Day are believed to be between 4,000 and 9,000 troops. Allied casualties were estimated to be at least 10,000, with 4,414 verified deaths. 7. The Lone Ranger The Lone Ranger is a fictitious, masked, former Texas Ranger, who fought outlaws in the American Old West alongside his Native American companion, Tonto. The character has been described as an enduring icon of American culture. During the Cold War, the creation story of the nation, of pioneers settling the Western frontier by hard labor and individual ambition, was pressed into national service to give a Cold War narrative explaining the United States' involvement on new frontiers in third world nations. Children received this concept primarily through Western-themed popular culture. The Lone Ranger comic books emphasize that American youth should perform an acceptable role for the nation and for themselves as future leaders in a global competition. The Lone Ranger portrayed for young viewers in both the United States and colonial nations the legitimate position of the post-war United States as civilizer and savior rather than conqueror or colonizer in a relationship of benevolent supremacy. The federal government and Hollywood used this national narrative to persuade young Americans to support and fight the Cold War. 6. Jack Womer Jack Neitz Womer was a renowned American World War II veteran and member of the Filthy 13, most known for his wartime exploits. Womer served with the 29th Ranger Battalion, the 101st Airborne Division, and the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Throughout his time in the 101st Airborne Division, Womer was assigned to the demolitions platoon of the 506th PIR Regimental Headquarters Company, which was officially known as the 1st Demolition Section and dubbed the Filthy 13. Womer was known for his battle savvy, which he credited to his hard training by British commandos while serving in the 29th Ranger Battalion. He was never injured in combat. Womer was a member of the Filthy 13, which parachuted into Normandy, France on June 6, 1944, as part of the Normandy invasion. He was the only member
member of the Filthy 13 who survived Operation Market Garden in September 1944, the Battle of the Bulge in December 1944, and the 1945 assault on Hitler's residence in Berchtesgaden, Germany. Womer, the last surviving member of the original Filthy 13, died on December 28, 2013. 5. Operation Market Garden Operation Market Garden was a World War II Allied military operation that took place in the German-occupied Netherlands from September 17 to 25, 1944. Its goal was to carve a 64-mile salient into German territory with a bridgehead across the Lower Rhine River, establishing an Allied assault route into northern Germany. This was to be accomplished through two sub-operations, taking nine bridges with combined U.S. and British airborne forces, followed by British land forces moving quickly across the bridges. The first Allied Airborne Army conducted the airborne operation, while the British 2nd Army's 3X Corps carried out the land operation. More than 41,000 airborne soldiers were dropped at strategic locations to grab vital bridges and hold territory until land forces arrived. The land forces were made up of 11 armored and motorized brigades, each with comparable men. The ground forces approached from the south along a single route flanked by floodplains on both sides. The plan was that they would go 64 miles from their starting point to the Rhine Bridge in 48 hours. Approximately 100,000 German soldiers were in the area to counter the Allied onslaught. It was the largest airborne operation of the war up to that point. 4. The Pathfinder Offer The Dirty Dozen was a Hollywood smash, but it was partially based on a real-life World War II paratrooper regiment. Jake McNeese led the group, whose activities inspired the 1967 film and earned them the label The Filthy 13. McNeese died at the age of 93. While the film took liberties with The Filthy 13, the real McNeese was as colorful as Major John Reisman, played by Lee Marvin. He regarded himself as the head troublemaker in a group of troublemakers. On the eve of the Normandy invasion in 1944, his troops jumped behind German lines. Some labeled it a suicide mission. McNeese shaved his head and painted his face for the D-Day jump, which went over well with his comrades. So, he began chopping their hair and drawing markings all over their faces for disguise. It was a morale booster, and it worried not only the Germans, but also the Frenchmen when they arrived in France. Following D-Day, McNeese assisted in the resupply of troops during the Battle of the Bulge, among other difficult tasks. 3. The Surprise Mission to Bastogne The Siege of Bastogne was a December 1944 confrontation between American and German forces in the Belgian town of Bastogne as part of the broader Battle of the Bulge. The German onslaught targeted Antwerp's harbor. To get there before the Allies could regroup and deploy their superior air power, German motorized forces had to take the roads across eastern Belgium. Because all seven main highways in the highly wooded Ardennes Hills intersected in Bastogne, just a few miles from the border with neighboring Luxembourg, control of the crossroads was critical to the German onslaught. After going AWOL from Paris after Market Garden, McNeese volunteered with the Pathfinders, believing he would never make another combat jump. These were paratroopers dispatched ahead of the main force to guide them in or perform resupply drops. Half of the original Filthy 13's surviving members joined the Pathfinders, intending to spend the remainder of the war training in England. To their surprise, they parachuted into the embattled town of Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge. The 20 Pathfinders lost only one member, even though they were expected to lose 80 to 90 percent of their numbers. 2. The Pathfinder Mission During World War II, a group of paratroopers gained a reputation for their unusual behavior and battle strategies. The Filthy 13 were notorious for their disrespect for military discipline and their more than scruffy look. Despite their unconventional approach, they played critical roles in several major actions, including D-Day. Their story was later adapted into a popular Hollywood film, The Dirty Dozen. This 13-man crew was formed to work as demolition experts, sabotaging targets deep behind enemy lines. They were alleged nicknamed the Filthy 13 while stationed in England before transferring to mainland Europe. The troop was housed in barracks at the time and refused to bathe more than once a week. They'd been poaching game from a nearby property, for which the U.S. Army would be fined $10,000, and wanted to save their water rations for cooking their catch instead of washing their bodies. 1. Hellraiser It was the night before one of the most transcendental military invasions in human history, and hundreds of C-47 sky trains sped across the English Channel, carrying thousands of heroic paratroopers about to embark on the darkest chapter of their lives. The jets transported a unique set of paratroopers, complete with mohawk haircuts and tribal facial paint. The group, commanded by the wayward and untamed Jake McNasty McNeese, laughed and joked as ferocious German flak fire engulfed their aircraft. As the Skytrain lost altitude, McNeese instructed his men to prepare for the jump. The lights within the cabin then turned red, and the guys jumped to their feet amid fire and thunder. As McNeese and his comrade Willie approached the door, 
flak burst through the warplane's belly, hitting Willie's rucksack and unraveling his parachute inside the aircraft. The C-37, now heavily damaged, continued to lose altitude as Willie anxiously attempted to gather his parachute and move away from the hatch so that additional paratroopers could jump. McNeese then jumped into the flak-lit sky over France and the Skytrain exploded in midair just seconds later. There was no time to mourn since McNeese and the rest of the renowned Filthy 13 squad were now behind enemy lines in Normandy with a critical task to complete. They were going to raise hell. Watching these videos makes you realize how much these soldiers risked fighting for freedom. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.